Hello, I'm Lisa Orgler, and today I'll be sharing how I create a border and title block in Illustrator. The first thing we'll do is create a new file. So go to File, New. This window will pop up, and you can type a name for your drawing. I'm going to use one artboard. For size, I will just use 8.5 by 11. And for units, I will use inches. For color mode, at the bottom, you can decide if you will be printing out your final drawing. And if you are, you'll be using CMYK. If your final image will be used on a computer screen, you can choose RGB. And I think that's all I want to pick for now. So we'll hit OK. Now your paper or your artboard is on your screen. You can center it better by going to View and then choose Fit Artboard to Window. And now I can see my entire page. Now that we've created our artboard, we can create a layer for our title block. The Layers window on my screen is to the top right. Or you can find it on your screen by going to Window and then clicking the Layers word towards the bottom. I'll be creating a layer called Title Block. There are two ways that I like to create a border in Illustrator. But before we start with either, I like to put the Smart Guides on first. And what that does is it forces our lines that we draw to snap to a line or a corner or an intersection. It, it will be easier for you to create a, a clean border if S Smart Guides is on. To find Smart Guides, go to View, and then scroll towards the bottom and make sure the word Smart Guides has a check in front of it to make sure it's on. The next thing we'll do is draw a rectangle on our sheet. The rectangle tool on my toolbar is this square right here. If you don't see the square, it might be hidden under a, another tool. When there is a small triangle on the bottom right of the box, it means there are more tools underneath. So another shape might be on top. Once I have the rectangle selected, I can draw a rectangle on my sheet. And to start off, I will draw it from corner to corner. And because the smart guides are on, it will snap to the corners as I draw. I'm dragging my mouse and holding the button down to drag it across. Once the rectangle is drawn, you can see these small grips are all the way around the rectangle, so I've just drawn one. You can go to this top part of the screen to see that the border is black and the inside of my border is white. I prefer to make the inside of my border clear. So to change the inside, you can also look at your swatches panel. And in the swatches panel, it's the same squares that I looked at on the top left. The top square is solid, it's white. The square underneath is the color of the border or the stroke, which is black. I would like to make my white square transparent, and you can do that by clicking on this red line. And once you do that, now you have a rectangle with a black outline and a transparent center. Now that we have our border drawn, I would like to offset it to where I actually would like it because we're not going to put our border on the edge of the paper because you would not see it if you printed it out. The next thing I like to do is to use the offset path command. We will take the rectangle that we currently have and we will move it in a certain dimension or a certain measurement. We want to make sure that the rectangle is highlighted. Then we go to object path, offset path, and then this window pops up. The top window where it says offset is the dimension or the measurement that you want to pull in your border. And if you hit preview, you can see what's happening as you're working with this. 0.5 inches, a half an inch is what I would like my border to be. 
and you can see when I type that in, it actually moved the border outside, but we want the border to come inside. So I will need to put a negative sign in front of that, and now it pulled it in. And because I hit the preview button, I can see that. So now you can hit OK. Now I can highlight the old border and delete it. And now we have our new border exactly at one half inch in. And I would like to make this border a little thicker. And you can change that up here in the stroke command. Right now it's at one point. I think I'm going to make it three points so it's a heavy border. And now we're done with the offset path command. Another way we can create a border is by using rulers. First, let's delete the border we already created. Now I'd like to turn the rulers on. And we can do that by going to View, Rulers, and then Show Rulers. And now you'll see that there are rulers on the top and on the side of your paper. And this is the neat thing. You can drag a line from those rulers to create guidelines on your paper. And I'm dragging them to a half inch. Now I have guidelines that are a half inch inside the edge of my paper. These guidelines will not show up if you print. So if you need to use guidelines for other elements in your drawing, you're welcome to do that. They are a great feature. Now that we have our guidelines set, we can create the border by clicking on the rectangle tool once again. And I still have my smart guides on, so this rectangle will snap to the corners. And it looks like my border is not black, so I'm going to change that by clicking up here. But the middle is transparent, so that's good. I'll click on my selection tool so I can click off of my border. And it looks like my border is there, but my guidelines are hiding it. So I might just delete my guidelines, but you can keep them if you need to. And there's my border. I can click on the border to change the stroke width once again. I'll make it three again. And now I have a border by using rulers. Now that our border is drawn, let's draw a title block. You can draw a title block along the bottom of your sheet, along the right side of your sheet, or in the bottom right corner. For this project, I will draw a title block along the bottom side of the sheet. I will go ahead and use the rectangle tool again. And since I still have my smart guides on, it will just snap to the corners. And as I'm drawing it, Hopefully you can see that the width and height are in the little box next to it, so I know how tall it is. I only want my box maybe a, an inch and a half tall, so we will leave it at that. If I want to be more accurate about the size, I can go on my top toolbar and click on Shape Properties, and sometimes this is just showing on your toolbar. You don't have to actually click into it, but mine is hidden right now. And right here is where I can adjust the width or the height. And the height is very close to 1.5, but I will go ahead and change that. And now I'll click on my selection tool once again and click off to the side. And now I should have my title block drawn in. Now I like to put text in my title block. But before I do that, I would like to create a layer for that text inside the title block. So I'll go back to my layers window, click on new layer, double click on it, and call it text in title block. And then use that as my current layer that I'm going to work on. So I'll highlight that. And in the meantime, I'm also going to lock the title block layer. This will allow me to add text to the title block without altering the title block by accidentally moving it. Once I have the layer created for text in my title block, I'll highlight it, then click on the type tool in my left toolbar, 
And with this tool, I can create a text box to write my lettering. And the first thing I'll do is create the title for my project. You can change the size of your lettering by going to the top of the toolbar and clicking on this window for your font size. You can change your font in this window or you can click on character and have other options for your text. And I would encourage you to explore those different things. Now I have my text done for my title block and I would like to create a north arrow. There are many ways you can create a north arrow. I'm going to simply create a triangle and this is a fun way to create one. You can use the polygon tool which is hidden underneath the rectangle tool. Here it is. And while you click down, you hold your button down on your mouse and while you're holding your button down on your mouse click the down arrow on your keyboard and you can either make more sides or less sides on your polygon. I'm going to make less sides so there are only three to make a triangle and then I'm still holding down the key at this point on my mouse at the same time I'm going to hold shift and shift will make it perfectly horizontal on the bottom and then I can let go and now I have a triangle. This triangle is just like the rectangle. If you look up at these boxes, you'll see that the fill is black and then the outside line is transparent. You can change that if you want. You can also look in the swatches panel to change colors. If you want the fill to be white instead, you can change that or a different color. That's perfectly fine, but I'm going to leave it black. And now you can either write north underneath it with text, or if you want to do something a little different, you can create an N, make it white by going to your swatch panel, making the N a little larger, and then putting that N in your triangle. Now this is when you want to turn off your smart guides because it's not lining up the way I want so I'm going to turn smart guides off quickly and then I can put that in exactly where I want it. And just a little trick you can grab two objects if you click on the first one hit shift at the same time and then click on the next one and now you've got both of them highlighted. And one more trick while they're highlighted if you right click and hit group or click on group it will merge them and now they're one object when you move them and you can ungroup them also if you right click on them again but that's just a nice way if you're putting two objects together and now we're done with our title block